So you want to play modded Minecraft? Cool, welcome, tons to see and do here. But diving into this vast new world of mods can be a little intimidating. What with the thousands of new blocks, new concepts like transferring power using machines. And what mods do I want to add anyway? One, three, two hundred? It's totally up to you. But there are a few things you should know up front before dipping your toes in. I'll make the whole experience smoother and a little bit less confusing. First of all, we have a bunch of really good mapping mods. Now the one I'm using here is called FTB Chunks. Press M to bring up your map and you can see all the places you've been. At the bottom it gives you the coordinates and all sorts of information on the biome and the current block that is the highest up in the world that you're hovering your mouse over. It even shows where other players are in multiplayer. See, here's Cadencraft. You can also create waypoints so you can remember places you want to visit later, like this oil right here. Add waypoint. We're going to call it oil. Hit accept, and now there's a waypoint there. And out in our real world, not only do we see it on our map, we can look out the window, uh, not out the window, out the door, and see that beam of light all the way over there, letting us know exactly where it is. It also shows creatures on your map as little dots if they're modded, or shows their faces if they're things that are from vanilla Minecraft, like the cows in the upper right hand corner. That's pretty cool. The second awesome feature is going to be JEI, or Just Enough Items. If you open your inventory, you will see every single item in the game, modded or otherwise, on the right hand side. This is extremely handy for finding out recipes for all the new items and exactly how they're used. Clicking on an item or pressing the letter R anywhere in your inventory, either on the right here or something you're holding in your inventory, will show you the recipe for that item, like Nocturnal Powder from Astral Sorcery. We have to use a luminous crafting table, and this is the stuff you put in, it'll result in four Nocturnal Powder. Now, what exactly is this used for? We can hover over any item over here or in our inventory and press the letter U, and it shows exactly what it's used for. The nocturnal powder goes here on the starlight crafting altar to give you the celestial gateway. You can also use it in an iridescent altar. If you want to find a particular item, use the search bar in the bottom. Let's search for Pexels in the game. These are items that are combination tools that can do more than just mining or cutting or digging. They do a combination of items, and here's all the ones we have. We can even search by particular mods to try to find that pesky one thing we can never remember, like Mechanism's Osmium Compressor. Mechanism Osmium? Right there, the Osmium Compressor. Perfect. And if you have the items in your inventory to create a particular item, you can actually go to a crafting, here we go, crafting bench look up the item that you want, like a refined obsidian breastplate, right there, click on it, and since we have the items in our inventory, we can hover right here on move items, press the plus sign, and it auto fills for you in any crafting interface. And boom, we have our item. You'll also see these tool tips up at the top center. It used to be an old mod called Wayla. what am I looking at, Wayla? but that was limited because some information that's only available to the server could never be sent to the player because it was all done on the player's end. This one is called the One Probe. It works almost exactly the same way. When you look at a block, it gives you all sorts of information about it. What mod is it from? What block is it? And what item you need to break it? See, you need a pickaxe for this one. If I were to just punch it, it would, uh, it would break and not drop its own item, and that's bad, so, so, we're, so we're not going to do that. It shows you how much energy is in each of them, it's just got a lot of really great information. Tons of mods have their own guidebooks as well, so you know exactly what you're supposed to do with each. For example, this is the one for Thermal. Come, come here, come, come here, there you go. Open it up, and sure enough, it has all the information for the Thermal Series guidebook. You can click on each one, make your way through, see how everything works, turn pages, go back. Shows you crafting recipes, super handy, a lot of the mods have these. It keeps you from having to go out to a wiki or out to another website just to find out how to use all the stuff in it. Super nice. The next thing you should know about is the Forge Mod Loader's energy type. So let's uh, head down here. The Forge Mod Loader uses Forge Energy, or FE. Now, a lot of mods have their own energy types, like Flux or Jewels, but pretty much all of them also accept Forge Energy, because it's the universal energy type. Nobody wants to have six different energy types to power six different machines, so Forge Energy is pretty universal. Let's look at some of the ways of generating it. 
You can burn stuff in things like furnators or dynamos. They all take different kinds of input to let you burn them to create power and output it into your power network. Then there are solar panels, of course, all different kinds. There's this one here from Mechanism, these from Power down here. I love the Power mod. They're going to generate a little bit less power, but of course, it's free. You get it you get it from the sun. But you also get none at night, so you need to be careful about that. And then there are also heat generators that use heat blocks around them to heat up the inside and generate power, like these thermo generators or this heat generator from Mechanism. Super handy. Again, it's free. You just put some lava around it and it starts to generate power, but it's never going to be as much as if you're actually burning something. Different mods use different ways of transferring that power around. It could be conduits or ducts or cables, but they all serve the purpose of sending power to your machines. See, we have these universal cables from Mechanism, we have these energy cables from Power, we have these HV cables that go between the wire connectors, which is very cool, and you'll notice that you can find all sorts of information on them by looking at the item in JEI. See, it'll let 3.2 kilo FE per tick, that's 1000 FE per tick, so, you know, 3200 FE per tick can come through this cable. Anything more than that, it's going to be stuck. This cable is probably less expensive because it only transfers 100 FE per tick. So these are going to transfer a lot more. But if we look at their recipes, see this one requires steel. The other one, however, requires these dielectric rods, which just requires basic stuff like coal, clay, blaze powder or bucket, buckets of lava. And yes, you get the, the bucket back when you use it. So the cheaper stuff is always going to be easier to get, but it's going to be less capable than the good stuff. And a lot of these cables can be upgraded to higher tiers for more power going through them. And you'll notice they even connect with each other. Even though they're from different mods, they'll still connect to each other to transfer power between. And that's handy. There is so much cool stuff to see and do in modded Minecraft. We've barely scratched the surface here, but I've at least given you some concepts that will help you start to navigate your way through that complex world. Now, your next step is to either install a pre-built mod pack from something like the FTB launcher, or put it together yourself for either Forge or Fabric. If you need to know more about installing Forge or Fabric, I've got links right up there in the corner that you can check out. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and put on my jetpack, and I will see you all next time for more modded Minecraft. See y'all later.